This video covers Chapter 1, Introduction to Hickman's Integrated Principles of Zoology. Zoology is the scientific study of animals. This definition sounds simple and self-explanatory, but it doesn't really give a clue to how much we really know about animals. Zoology is one of the oldest branch of biology. Signs of animal understanding were recorded in prehistoric paintings in ancient caves. The study of animals is guided by long-established principles. A few of the important principles include the laws of thermodynamics, which is a principle about energy flow and transformation, the theory of evolution, the principle about population change that lead to new species, and the principle of genetics, the principle about transmission of heredity. Scientific principles are important not only because they give us working perspectives and methods in scientific study, but also because they allow us to examine the validity of our findings in zoological studies. What are animals? Animals are generally multicellular eukaryotic organisms that belong to kingdom Animalia. Their cells are classified as eukaryotic because they have membrane-enclosed genetic material called nucleus. They are ingestive heterotrophs, meaning they acquire their energy and raw materials from other sources by biting, chewing, and swallowing food. The term ingestive heterotrophs distinguishes them from the members of kingdom fungi, which are absorptive heterotrophs. That is, they directly absorb their nutrients from their environments after externally digesting them. Animals, on the other hand, digest their food internally. Animal cells lack cell walls, a property that allows great flexibility of their body, especially during movement. Paleontological records has it that animals first appeared during the Precambrian era of geologic time scale, about 600 million years ago. The question that I posted for you to answer was what was the first animal to appear on Earth? Have you answered the question already? Over the past decades, there's been a new hypothesis about animal, what animal, actually evolved first. I hope you have already Googled this out and posted your answer. Animals have characteristics that they share with all other life forms on Earth. These include chemical uniqueness, genetic program, complex hierarchical organization, reproduction, metabolism, development, environmental interaction, and movement. Mentioning Briefly about these properties may provide a window by which we can further appreciate animal life. We will discuss them one by one. Chemical uniqueness. Chemical uniqueness in animals is brought about by characteristic atomic composition that forms very large and complex molecules called macromolecules. Four important macromolecules are recognized in living things, namely nucleic acids, lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. These categories differ in their atomic composition, the kinds of chemical bonds, and the roles they serve in living systems. Proteins, for example, are built from 20 different amino acids by peptide bonds. Additional bonds between non-adjacent amino acids may also occur, thereby coiling the polypeptide into three-dimensional form. How proteins assume a 3D configuration depends on the amino acid property and chemical bonds they can form among themselves. The same situation also goes to the other major biomolecules, producing so much variation among the chemistries of different animals. The two images shown here in this slide are two stick models of the enzyme luciferase in Japanese fireflies. This is the enzyme responsible for the characteristic light emitted by fireflies at night. The color of light that is emitted by luciferase is normally greenish yellow. But when an amino acid in the luciferase cofactor was changed from serine to asparagine, the color of light emitted changed to red. The chemical uniqueness of luciferase depend on its constituent amino acid. And changing just one amino acid drastically change the protein's function and perhaps compromise the reproductive success of the firefly itself. Genetic program consists typically of several hundred genes that are expressed in different locations and time in cells. The genes are made up of strings of nucleotides in the DNA of chromosomes. Although composed only of four types of nucleotides, 
adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. The sequence of nucleotides form the genetic code that specifies the chain of amino acids in protein synthesis. The genetic code arose very early in evolutionary history, and so it is shared by all living organisms on Earth. Because gene expression is highly controlled and regular, transmission of heredity is ensured. Animals demonstrate progressively complex hierarchical organization from the smallest component, the atomic level, to the largest level, the biosphere. Each level builds up from the level below it. As shown in the figure to the right, the levels of hierarchical organization include the atom, molecule, organelle, cell, tissue, organ, organ system, organism, population, community, ecosystem, and the biosphere. Cells form the smallest self-replicating units of the biological hierarchy that are capable of basic functions. A very important feature of this hierarchical organization in life is the emergence of novel characteristics at any given level of organization, called emergent property. These emergent properties arise from the interactions of components in that level of organization and are influenced by properties at the lower level components. Because each hierarchical level has its own emergent properties that can't be inferred from components below that level, biologists specialize in specific fields of study. For example, the atomic and molecular composition of organisms are studied mainly by biophysics and molecular and cell biologists, while populations and ecosystems are studied mainly by ecologists or population biologists. All organisms produce offsprings like themselves. Gene replication and cell division preps up reproduction in animals. Reproduction in animals occur in a variety of ways. Some small invertebrate animals reproduce asexually, either by dividing equally in binary fission or unequally by budding or fragmentation, giving rise to genetically identical offspring. Parent animals literally produce clones of themselves this way. Parthenogenesis occurs when unfertilized female organisms asexually gives birth to offspring. Like any asexual reproduction, the animal produces clones of itself as well. No need for the male members of the population this way. 5% of animals are hermaphrodites. These are mostly invertebrates that possess both male and female reproductive organs. Because they have both organs, they can self-fertilize and reproduce asexually. Most of the time, however, they mate in sexual reproduction, rendering offsprings with variations. Variations in populations render higher chances of survival in changing environments. Transmission of genes and traits is very precise, ensuring that heredity is successfully passed on. But variations can interact with heredity that makes evolution inevitable. Metabolism mainly consists of chemical reactions by which nutrient energy is transferred to ATP and the breakdown products of atoms are used to synthesize molecules needed by the cell. The whole metabolic process involves ingestion, digestion, cellular respiration, and molecular synthesis. Metabolism is an interaction of destructive, catabolic, and constructive anabolic chemical reactions that arose early in evolutionary history. Hence, metabolism is shared characteristic by all living things. Metabolism include catabolic and anabolic reactions on carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Most of these metabolic events occur in specific locations in cells and is covered in the study of physiology. All animals undergo a characteristic pattern of bodily and functional changes from conception to adult stage. This is known as development. These changes involve alteration of size and shape and differentiation of structures and functions towards the adult stage. Development progresses in a series of transformations from fertilization to its final adult form. Development in most cases is dramatic in metamorphic animals. 
because one developmental stage is so dissimilar to another stage. Ironically, however, most early stages of development among animals is more similar than the latter stages of development. This is mainly the field of study in developmental biology. All animals interact with their environment. These interactions are covered by the field of ecology. Ecology is most interested in factors that influence geographic distribution and abundance and how animals respond to environmental stimuli in terms of metabolism and physiology. Animal responses to environment is known as irritability. As organism and environment might seem distinct entities, zoology considers animals and environment as inseparable. Rapid, precise, and highly controlled movements are unique to animals, but movements may also be observable at the subcellular and cellular levels. Semi-autonomous molecular movements, such as those of enzymes and membrane transport proteins, are important to cell functions. Movements at the cellular level, such as sperm motility and ciliary movements, are essential for reproduction, growth, and development in animals. Autonomous movements of animals, however, is the crux of our study here because animal movement is so diverse and different adaptations have evolved for locomotion. On a larger scale, animal migrations over long distances are equally as important topics because these mass movements are important to survival of the animal species. As any other science, Animal study is guided and explained by natural law. Hypotheses about animal observations are testable against the observable world, and whatever conclusions that we may draw are always tentative and can be tested repeatedly. In the scientific method, we can never absolutely prove a hypothesis. We can only accept or reject it on the basis of evidence. If the null hypothesis is rejected, then subsequently the alternative hypothesis is accepted. But this too will be subject to further testing. The scientific method is also known as the hypothetical deductive method. Although a multi-step process, it can be summarized in only two steps. First, the formulation of a hypothesis, and second, the testing of a hypothesis. Hypothesis, is a proposed explanation made on the basis of limited evidence, and it is tested by gathering data. During hypothesis testing, we always formulate it in two forms, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis should be one that permits statistical test of data to reject its prediction if the hypothesis is rejected. It basically defines the statement which states that there is no exact or actual relationship between variables. The alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, is a statement that claims that there is significant difference in the variables being investigated, and the null hypothesis is found to be false. Major consideration in formulating hypothesis include its testability, that is, it can be subjected to the rigorous scrutiny by acceptable methods, and parsimony, the simplest explanation that can explain the data is the most likely hypothesis. Testing of hypothesis should be carried out in the form of additional field observation, an experiment, a simulation, or model testing. What is important here is that test of hypothesis does not prove, rather it contradicts or falsifies the hypothesis by the evidence gathered. The next step after hypothesis testing is publication of your results and conclusion. Publication of your finding opens up your hypothesis for further investigation by other researchers. When a hypothesis is capable of explaining a wide variety of related phenomena, it is promoted to a theory. Theories in biologies abound, and it is not a light thing, because it is supported by massive amounts of evidences at various levels of different fields of biology and other sciences. 
A theory is widely accepted by researchers all around the world and is still continually tested and verified. When a theory revolutionizes research and understanding of a universally observed phenomenon, theory is promoted to a paradigm. A paradigm, to shorten the long technical definition of it, is a new way of looking at things. Like for the first time, you have a new way of solving problems or a new way of working on things that are much more simple and perhaps fun. A good example of a paradigm is the theory of evolution. It is a paradigm that is used in biology today. Prior to the 1800s, animal species were studied as if they were historically unrelated and unchanging species. But Darwin's evolutionary theory replaced this view. It in fact revolutionized the way research on animals is conducted. And for 150 years, this theory has guided biological research, and to date, there is no scientific evidence that has discredited it. It has strong explanatory power and continues to guide research in the natural world today. Evolutionary theory is generally accepted as the cornerstone of biology. A supplementary activity of this module, that is, not all of the work is mine but yours as well, please submit a written essay about the following related topics in Chapter 1. Contrast between experimental and comparative method of hypothesis testing. When do we use experimental methods and when do we use comparative methods in hypothesis testing? Summarize the following sections. Darwin's theory of evolution as described by Ernst Mayer and the Mendelian heredity and chromosomal theory of inheritance. That's all. Thank you and good day.